Well, Paddy's a good boy, but he cuts corners. I keep telling him, look, Paddy, I don't need no aggravation. Just do what I pay you to do and keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Even then, I've got a mouthful of lip. <laughs> Can that boy talk? <laughs> I told him, one of these days you're going to get done for GBH of the eardrums. <laughs> <laughs> Still, give him his due. He can't sell a motor. Yeah. He's all right, Paddy. <laughs> Pushy, like you. Only you're smart. You married into the family. <laughs> The Ford and the Rover. Yeah, the 68. Into the little white gods. Don't forget to curtsy. <laughs> Morning. Morning, sir. Sergeant Fennell. Fennell and Clement, sir. This is Sergeant Ward. We've met. How long is your inspector away for? End of the week, sir. Father just died, a funeral and so on, you know. Right, well, let's see what we've got, shall we? Nasty old morning, sir. Fancy a cup of coffee. You'll be pleased to see us. Always pleased, you know that. Thank you. Should have pulled this lock down years ago. Money in a good slump, sir. Thank you. Who made this? Wife. Very nice. Car lot. Yes? Uh, factory, sir. Leather goods, no night work or watchman. Yes? A uh, Doss house. Eight drunks sleeping it off. Caretaker? Drunk as they were. <laughs> Nothing hurt. Not a dicky, sir. Time somewhere between half eleven and one o'clock. Uh, that's as near as you can put it, sir. Who found him? Coloured fella. Bus driver walking to the depot. Saw him lying there, shins over the gates. They were locked? Yes, sir. Prince? Too messy. What would he be doing there at that time of night? Hard to say. No one knew he was coming here. Well, who should know? The wife. Not that we'll get much there. Mm. We did find a couple of logbooks on him. Could mean something. I doubt it. Not in his game. Still checked. House to house. Dozen men legging it now, sir. All right. Thank you. Sorry about the office, sir. Best we can do. Oh, it'll do fine. Not exactly home from home. It's fine. Anything you want, we're two doors along. Sir. Oh, Sergeant. Sir. Can't stand... Dirty blotting paper. Yeah. Oh, uh, Since when? What's that? The blotting paper. Oh, I'd like to keep up the image. They'll <laughs> be well pleased. That's right. Excuse me, sir.
Thank you. Thank you, sir. Right. Tell me about the wounded man, Sleep. Yes, well, local talent. He owns three car lots and a laundrette. He's done quite well for himself, considering. Considering what? He started life shooting other people's knees off. It's a grammar school education for him. Mm. PTI in the army, jacked it in and sold his muscle to the highest bidder. Four? Usual. GBH, malicious wounding with a weapon, assault occasionally, bodily harm, and demanding with menaces. Clean for the last four years. Now a respectable businessman. Scum. Handmade suits, two daughters of the local convent, but still scum. So, he goes to one of his places late at night. Someone tries to blow his head off. A set-up, do you think? Mm, looks that way. We'll try and sound just that little bit interested. Well, you know how I feel. I know we've got a job to do. With precious little chance of getting anywhere. I mean, you know the sort of people we're dealing with. A couple of villains have a disagreement. Someone pulls in a shotgun artist. It's a private war. Chances of us nicking anyone are virtually nil. So why bother? Yeah, I didn't say that. My old governor would have had you thrown out of the force for even thinking it. Sir. Hi, yes. Uh, may I have some tea, please? Oh, and some biscuits, if there are any. Thank you. I'll give them home from home. You know, when I was first aide to CID, we had a job, a little girl. Heavy mob from the yard moved in. My feet never touched the ground. They were with us for three months. Nothing. We laughed them all the way back to the embankment. Behind their backs, of course. So we... Uh, we will bother, won't we? Yes, sir. chances. He'll live. Of talking to her. The minute none. Will you let us know? You'll if... be informed. I take it he upset someone. Well, we think so. He's lost the sight of one eye and probably the use of his left arm. You obviously had a lot of work to do. He was on the table for nearly four hours. We had to put the top half of him together like a jigsaw puzzle. But perhaps you'd like to see the official list of his injuries. Uh, I've seen it. Ah, yes, of course. We send you a copy. There's efficiency for you. I take it you're both staying. Doctor, they call it lying down with dogs. I wouldn't know. I just helped to clean up the mess. He's been giving me some right old stick. Have you noticed, Sergeant? Doctors seem a lot younger nowadays. <laughs> Still, she's right. He should be dead. I'll give him time. What about the wife? Oh, she's been interviewed. We've got a statement from her. Well, give me a shout as soon as there's any movement. Sir. Are you working shifts? Three hours, sir. I tell you relief. If it looks like coming around, I want to know, right? Right, sir. What about uh, visitors, sir? Well, he's on the danger list. They won't let him have any. The wife? Oh, yes, they'll let her in, of course. Might even help us, but no one else. Wait. Well, I'd say that's it. About ten feet. No more. Cartridges? I have number four. Both bells. Yes, bang, bang. Blood. Well, you saw for yourself. No, no, on whoever did the shooting. Well, at that range, with those injuries, possibility. There could be a blood like a powder, too. Mm. According to the forensic officer at the scene, there were spots of blood on the ground up to a radius of eight feet. They're on the photos, too. Well, in that case, there's more than a fair chance to be some blood on it. But maybe small enough for him not to realise it? Mm, maybe. Uh, now, if you'll excuse me. Yeah, thanks. Another souvenir. Oh, they keep turning up. How long's the war been over? Oh, the husband thought it might come in useful one day. Did it? Wife seems to think so. Mm. She's been married to him for nearly 20 years. The marriage took a turn for the worse when the wife put a bullet through the old man's head. <laughs> through his buttocks, actually. Mm. 
Nice to know romance isn't dead. Merry Christmas. Well, keep you. Oh, that's all right. No point to water, right? None at all, sir. No. Ah. Thank you. Right. Let's see what we've got. A local villain goes to his shop, well after business hours. Someone tries to spread him over the wall. Sad. That's the picture, right? Right, sir. How did he get there? Sir? If we assume he didn't walk, how did he get there? Whoever set him up drove him there. If it was a setup. What do we know about his movements last night? Well, sir, he was in his local boozers about 11, uh, King's Arms. Alone? Most of the time. One of his oppos came in with his girlfriend, a Paddy Connell worked for him as a salesman. Barman reckons they was having something of an up and a downer. Nothing serious. Connell showing off in front of his totty, sleeve putting him down. Usual. What about this Connell? Already checks out. Totally in the clear. Plenty of witnesses. He's a straight enough lad, no form. Certainly not this sort of caper. Does he know anything about those two logbooks? Nothing, sir. Certainly didn't see anything unusual in Slee having them on him. The thing being, of course, that Slee's car was found outside the pub. He drove it there, didn't drive it away. Sir. He leaves the pub just before 11 o'clock. But he doesn't get into his car. He either walks somewhere or he meets someone outside the pub and they go off together. But nothing seen. Nothing seen. That is, nothing we'd know about. And the chances are that whoever it was was somebody he knew pretty well. At least well enough to be able to spin him a yarn and drag him off. Always assuming, of course, that we're following the line that it was a setup. Mm. Could have arranged a meet. Why not inside the pub? Yes, it just pointed to something he wasn't expecting. But still went along with. So, someone he knew pretty well. Mm. And he finishes up here, what? Half a mile away. Who would want him seen to? Well, he wasn't exactly the local pickwick. He's bruised a few toes in his time. Mm. You put out feelers, of course. Sir, with respect, you know what it's like on a job like this. They shut up shop, close ranks. Nobody wants to know. I want to know. I appreciate your problems, Sergeant, but they're not exactly confined to this manner. Sir. House to house? Nothing yet, sir. How many men on it? Twelve, sir. Get more. Sir, we're 40% understaffed. Get more help from Divisional HQ. Yes, sir. All right, that's all. Thank you. Uh, we can, as they say, only do our best. Kingdom. No. Waste of bloody time. No. I say, pity. All right, thank you. You've got a friend out this way, haven't you? Yes, sir. I'm seeing him later tonight. Good. Chances? Fair. All right, well, you've got time to buy me a pint. Thank you. Just a quickie. Right, go and have a smoke. tell me would be in confidence. Oh, yes. You want them to get away with it? He wouldn't tell you, and neither will I. Even if... Even if you knew anything. Well, let me be the judge of that. Since when do I owe the likes of you a favour? I wouldn't Stotting say... Stotting round that bloody tip-pot Hitler's. You never left him alone. We told you what to do then, and you can do it now. I see. That's fine. Just leave you to sort it out in your own way. God willing, yes. And so it goes on and on. It pays for your pension. You didn't really expect anything else. Oh, that's right. After all, that would mean we'd both be on the same side. And your rules don't allow for that, do they? I married him. I know the score. You, Dave. Two kids at the local convent, down on her knees, praying to God every Sunday. Someone tries to blow her old man in half, and she doesn't want to know. There's faith for you. Faith or fear? Oh, don't tempt me. 
I can get very philosophical after a pint of bitter. Not after that stuff we had tonight. There ought to be a law against it. Mm. What do you think? I think we're up the well-known creek. Yeah. I wouldn't bother to wait. They're going to operate again. You know, I can't think of anyone big enough on this manor to bring in the frighteners. Especially a shotgun boy. Whoever did it didn't intend just to frighten. That weapon, that range, full in the face. No. What we're looking for is someone with intent to kill. Not just a maiming job. A murderer. I want to find him. Not spare, thanks. Still the old back trouble. Still seen the specialist? Thursdays. You've got something. I had to pay. Mm. It'd be tough for the 70s. <clears throat> About your friend, Mr. Slee. Yeah, no friend of mine. His brother-in-law. That's what the word says. He was set up by his brother-in-law. Name? Darbon. Eric Darbon. You'll find him in your books. When, when you say brother-in-law... His wife's brother. She doesn't... Oh, good God, no. There's a turn-up. Why would he do it? You know families. Jealousy, resentment, shotgun in the face, some family. So, Chummy set him up. Who for? Ah, now that I don't know. Still, it's a start, isn't it? No, oh, I love it when you say things like that. Well, isn't it? Yeah, it's a start. Well, <clears throat> I must be going. You've forgotten your paper. Now, with your money, I expect you'll be able to fill in a few more details. I shall certainly do my best. Clever old you. Now you're rich, you can buy me a cheese sandwich. Possible, do you think? Possible, sir. But? Well, it's just, uh, I don't know the informant, that's all. He's reliable enough. I would have thought local knowledge might Apparently have Apparently not. Sir. Tell me about him. Small stuff, housebreaking, receiving, nothing known for the past two years. Amazing how many of them go straight once they've made their pile. You yeah, like the aristocracy. <laughs> Boat labour's hard. Just as bad. We uh, bring him in then, sir. A nice and easy. No point in showing the dog the rabbit. A word in your ear, brother. What's it all about? Won't we'll keep him. What's it all about? You know, with your form, an unkind man might chalk that up as a housebreaking implement. It's been known. Two, two, it's been known. Then shut up. Yes. Payday. 
I work hard. Well, so do I, but... But why don't we play the one where you tell me you won it with a monkey on a rank outsider? Because I don't gamble. You did last night. Amazing, isn't it? Everyone tells me you're a big mouth. And you've hardly said a word. Look, either charge me with something or let me go home to Mum. You know better than that. I could hold you until your socks curl up. As for going home to your dear old mum, I doubt if she'd have you. Not when she hears about last night. I'm damn sure your sister wouldn't. Now, whatever made you do it? It must have been very hot under the collar to take on a job like that. What about a cup of tea, Sergeant? Hmm? Yes, sir. Oh, Starker. George. Last night, you met your brother-in-law outside a pub called the King's Arms. One witness saw you arrive, two saw you talking to him. You drove him to the car lot in Goldsmith Lane. He got out of the car. You put your tail between your legs and bang, bang, one brother-in-law nearly cut in two. For your share in the proceedings, this. And a bit more, I should think. Now, you can pile up all the alibis you can think of and I'm going to knock them all down again because I want you, Mr. Darwin. And I want the man who paid for your services. I don't know what you're talking about. Kingdom. It's tea time, sir. Ah, yes, Doctor. Mm -hmm. My man's still with him. Yes. Yes, of course I understand. Well, how long do you think? Right, well, I'd better come over then. Yeah, what? Well, that's his wife's concern, surely. Yeah, all right, straight away. Take over, will you? Hospital? Yeah. And how long you be? Not very long, by the sound of it. At least we'll know what heading to put on the charge sheet. He's regaining consciousness. Clemens is getting a statement from him. Look after Mr. Darbin for me, will you? He's going to need all the protection he can get. She was only on to me about getting a priest. A priest? Tell Ward I may as well go to the hospital anyway. Never know your luck. Right, sir. <sighs> He's dying, then. You should be with your sister, giving her moral support. You know what I mean? She's probably wondering where you are. Yeah. I'm looking for you. Yeah. The thing is, you're in a bit of a cleft stick when you come to think about it, which I'm sure you have. You've been no fool. <laughs> thing is, he's bound to put the finger on you now that he's dying uh, so that we can settle up for him. If he didn't die, he'd keep his mouth shut and have you sewn up the way he knows best. And let's face it, he spent a long time learning how. <laughs> Pay you back in kind, I shouldn't wonder. Mm. Ring at the door, you trot along to answer it. Uh, shotgun through the letterbox, wallop. <laughs> No, he wouldn't do it himself. No, he's clean nowadays. Uh, he'd probably buy some muscle like he used to be bought before he became a respectable businessman, unquote. I'll tell you something, Eric. I respect a good pro. Yeah, grudging respect. Ever go fishing? Big fish, big fight, but when you've got him there... You know what I mean? A good pro respects a good copper, too. You can feel it. But not you, Eric. You're a nothing. You're a part-time flannel foot with 11 thumbs and a belly full of water. I've got a good mind to have you away just for wasting my time. Stand up. Let's have a look at you. Stand up. And put that fag out. There's a good boy. A waste of time. I need a change of air. Ah, manners. Thing is, Eric, dear old British public would never believe it. People knocking each other off with shotguns, never. That's Chicago, not the old Kent Road. They read about it in the papers, but they still don't latch on to the way that scum like you operate. And you can't blame them. I mean... Look at it. Ugly-looking tool, isn't it? Sawn off. So it's easier to carry. More mess to clear up afterwards. 
and not easy to identify. Now, unless you've got the cartridges, which in this case we didn't, so... What's to say that this isn't the one that did for our friend Slee? Hmm? I'd say it, if I needed just that bit more to tip the balance. Ugly, hmm? You bastard! Now you can sit down. You bastard! Who paid you? Look, I mean... Who? Listen! I've been listening. He... It's up to you. I don't give a damn about you, Eric. I'll have your way for anything. So, I either throw the book at you or we come to some arrangement. Your choice. Bowers. Say that again. Bowers. Terry Bowers. Bowers doesn't operate the side of the river. That's how it started. Him spreading. He tried to do a deal with Dave for the garages. Dave wasn't having none, so he gets tanked up one night, goes over Bowers' way, starts shooting his mouth off about not being afraid of the big man. <laughs> you should hear Dave when he's got a few inside of him. Give him his due, he isn't... He wasn't scared of no one. So, Bowers got you to set him up? I didn't know. He said he was just going to talk. Talk, Bowers, don't give me that. That's what he said. Look, what was I supposed to do? I mean, you don't give a man like Bowers no aggravation. Dave did. Right. And where is he now? All right. So, you picked up Slee outside the pub. I had this customer on tap for a couple of motors. I told Dave I had to have the logbooks for first thing in the morning. He bought it straight off. Uh, greedy. I dropped him off and waited. I thought... Well, I thought they was just going to talk, but when he pulls out that gun... Bowers? You saying Bowers did the shooting? Bowers? No one else? Bowers. Terry Bowers. You should have seen him. I had gone clean round the bend. His eyes were sticking out of his head. He was almost slobbering. That'll show him who's the governor, he says. All of them. No one comes it big with Terry Bowers and gets away with it. I tell you, he... Paid me off. Told me to sit tight. Any trouble, he'd take care of it. And then he says, in a year's time, they'd be talking about how Terry Bowers cut a bloke in half and no one could touch him for it. No one. Look, I swear I didn't know that. That's all right, Eric. We'll take care of you. Supposing you do pull him in and you don't make it stick. We will. Like it did the last time. Right. Only this time you've got you up our sleeve. Look, I want complete protection. And you'll get it, Eric. Sanfell. You've been fair with us, Eric. We'll be fair with you. Fair? Like that was fair. You could never have used this, Eric. Never get away with it. If you'd been thinking straight, you'd have sussed it as the old come on. Bowers would have. But then you're not in the same league, are you, Eric? It was Bowers. Bowers? He'll tell you all about it. He's going to make a full statement. Aren't you, Eric? A full and voluntary statement to Sergeant Fennel. Not to worry, Eric. We'll look after you. Look after you like a baby. Come on, friend. Look. I swear I, I didn't know he was going to kill him. He didn't know he meant to kill him, Eric. I thought you said he was... Yes, I know. Misunderstanding. He'll live. Which is a problem that we'll have to sort out when we come to it. You know, Eric. Setting up your own brother-in-law. Mm. Still, we'll do our best, you know. Providing... Yes, yeah, Sergeant Ward. Get me Chief Superintendent Kingdom, please. I think he's at the hospital. I'm sorry. It's just that... 
You know, when I first joined the force, I caught a couple of local villains banged to rags. There was a bit of strong arm stuff, but I fancied me chances in those days. Pulled the pair of them in. I got a commendation and a broken nose. When my mother heard about it, she cuffed me round the ear. Twenty-two and she cuffed me round the ear. That's the sort of job you're in, she said. You better get out of it straight away. See, what happens is you grow a thicker skin. And maybe because of that, you get a bit rough round the edges. Don't you ever... <laughs> Only on my phone, sir, Sergeant Ward. Kingdom. It was Bowers. Bowers? Terry Dar Bowers? Yeah, Darbin was there. And he was an eyewitness. You got a sign statement from yeah, him? Fennel's getting it now. Look, Governor, I'd like to pick up Bowers now, right away, before he gets wind that we're holding friend Darbin. Governor? Yeah, all right. But watch it. One step out of line with a character like Bowers. I know. Everything by the book. Yeah. Something else has turned up, sir. Old boy from Ferguson's warehouse, the night watchman. Thinks he might have seen something. Oh, why the hell has it taken this long? Well, he sleeps all day. One of his oppos told him he phoned the local Nick. Is he there now? No, he won't leave the warehouse. He's an old soldier. Who isn't? <laughs> well, nothing looks like happening, does it, Doctor? Well, I'm afraid he's still very weak. We had hope. Yes, yeah, so had I. All right, let's go and see him. It'll be about an hour. I'm asleep. Oh, come on, Bars, get it open. It brought me my Christmas present. Gift wrapped. What is it this time, A vicious wounding with a weapon will do for a start. If Slee dies, of course, it'll be murder. Oh, you do try. Persistent to a fault. We'll have a look around before we go. You better come too. See fair play. All the best people use my bedroom. Pricey. Well, easy come, easy go. These suits must have set you back a few bob. Eighty quid a throw. In the wrong business. Well, what else could you do? All right, fine. In half an hour. Okay. Where's Darwin's statement? No statement. What? Nothing. Not a dicky bird. Well, what did you do? He talked to me. He says he was intimidated. He told the truth. Well, he won't repeat it. Not after a caution and not in front of witnesses. Get him in here. Look, it won't work. He's more scared of Bowers than he is of us. What well, he can say yes to a cup of tea without us. Yeah, so all right. Darwin will get his voice back when I need when he knows I got Bowers stitched up. Where is Bowers? Outside. I want his blood group. What do I do? Stick a pin in him? He was involved in a car accident a couple of years ago. Now, where did they take him? St. Mark's. Get on to them. They'll know. Right? Right. Wheel him in. Look, hadn't you better wait for... Mine.
Just a chat. Informal. What else business? Too many amateurs about these days. Kids, no discipline. I blame the parents. Very true. Now you, you had a good upbringing. Well, I pay them back. They must be proud of you. Yeah, my mummy keeps a scrapbook. My Terry with the stars. Oh, you know mothers. I know your mother. Now you. Yeah. Hey, tell me you're going into the hotel business. Well, that's a crust. You're going to be big, Terry. I mean, you can't fail now we've got all the other mobs locked away. <laughs> Clear field, you'll be number one in a couple of years. You'll have this place sewn up like a mailbag. Mailbag? Something I know nothing about. Ah, there was a time. Well, we all have to grow up. Sure, protection, drugs, bribery, intimidation of witnesses. <laughs> you grew up as straight as a willow. So have me away. Not for want of trying, Terry. Oh, dear. You see, they really should spend more money, get a better glass of copper. Right to the newspapers. I'll use your phone. Soon. Now, I tell you, Terry, you've got everyone around here scared out of their wits. Now, that took some doing. No, you're governor. The only thing worth remembering. Now, let's face it, Terry, you know how to make them remember. Not me, Squire. Legitimate businessman. My mistake. Wounding, you said? I said it'll do for a start. Not a chance. That's right. You've got friends. Could take him anywhere. Yeah, how is he, that pet lawyer of yours? What's his name? Still driving around in that Bentley? Merck. No one. I hate the sight of you, Terry. Do you know that? Every time I think of you, I feel sick in the stomach. Oh, dear. You trod an egg with milk. You send in somebody to take notes. Most people think that scum like you, they don't think you exist. They think it's all nice, clean domestics and parking offences. Yeah, well, don't knock the taxpayer. He's doing his best. Do a mail train. They think you're Robin Hood. Well, it's the robot, isn't it? That's what she was saying. The widow of the bloke who got his head bashed in. Remember him? No, not you. I'm warning you, Bars. Warning me? That you're not obliged to say anything. But anything you do say will be taken down in writing and may be used in evidence. Oh, that warning. Everything by the book. Now, about that suit of yours we took away. Yeah, will you have that clean before you send it back? There's blood on it. You know that? It isn't ketchup. How'd it get there? Well, how should I know? Perhaps on a nosebleed. Perhaps I cut my finger open to bottle of champers. It is yours, then. <laughs> no, cock, I didn't say that. No. Whose, then? Well, it could be anyone's, could it? Like Dave Slees. I have seen him in a long time. How long? Three, four weeks. And the blood got on your coat a long time after that. Well, I didn't know it was there at all, did I? Must have got there after that suit come back from the cleaners last. Must it? Just a few things to check out, and then we'll carry on talking. I've got a big day tomorrow. I'll try not to cock up your routine. Thank you. Any luck? It's three o'clock. Well, you enough. told them. They're checking. Right. You take over. I'm going over to the lab. And no phone calls. That solicitor's as bent as he is. And George, stumm. Hello. Oh, comic relief again. Oh, sharp. I've got a better one on that. Who's your tailor? Downstairs. Yes. Well, it's blood, all right. Human blood. The group. That's what I want to know. Your eyes must be a lot better than his. I was looking for it. He wasn't. Still, I'd have thought yeah, he Yeah, you don't know Bars. He's so sure of himself. One of these days he'll walk on water. You mean try? I mean walk. Uh, Bars is a fully-fledged psychopath. If only don't tell his mum. It might not look too good in her scrapbook. Right. Shall be long. No, 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 it's fine, yeah. Thanks for your help. What? Yeah, like the windmill. Only it did. Oh, any luck with the night watchman, sir? Waste of time. Where's Bars? Uh, downstairs in the cells. What? At the lab. What's he doing there? Uh, didn't he get in contact with you again? What about Darwin's statement? What about it? We haven't got one.
Well? Grupo. The same as Sleaze. Slee? Men who were shot. Oh, yeah. The same. The same group. What exactly does that prove? Well, it doesn't actually prove anything, of course. What would it prove if I told you the owner of this jacket was Group A? Hospital just found. All it, means, All it means is the blood belongs to someone else. And since nearly 50% of this country is Group O, that narrows it down to what? About 25 million people. Take it even further, find the subgroup, narrows it down again to a couple of million, one million. I'd say any barrister would have some rare old fun and games with that piece of evidence, wouldn't you? The blood on that coat didn't come from bars. It's the same group as the man who was shot. That may mean nothing on it its own. It means nothing at all. Anything else you want? Subgroup, please. Even though it means nothing? If we get anything else, it'll mean something. I mean, if we had Darbin's statement, it might I was mean... going to. He had agreed. Yes. You pulled in bars without it. Without waiting for it. Without a single shred of evidence. There's still the blood. Oh, the blood. One spot could have got there any time. What about traces of powder? None. You're a fool. It was a question of time. It was a question of proof. He did it. You know he did. Yes. You were there. You saw him pull the trigger. I know. Because Darbin told you. Yes. Alone, without a witness, without a caution. Have him in again. It may take time. We'll get a statement from oh, him. Oh, no, not now. Not after your clever trick with a gun. You've seen him again? Of course I've seen him. What do you think? I think if we lean on him hard enough... Oh, no. You've done all the leaning you'll do for one night. At least I got it out of him. We know now it was Bowers. No. How many times have we known and what good's it done us in court? Knowing and proving. I'll prove it. You'll do what I say. Sir. Sir. Oh, for God's sake, you know what he's like. Is that what you'd say in the box? How many times have we had him up and how many times has he made fools if of us? If we could have him away for anything. Oh, yes. Go on, let's have it. What would happen? All those pathetic little mugs he's frightened out of their lives would suddenly open up their hearts and give us enough to nail him for the rest of his natural. Oh, fine, marvellous, but I'll tell you, every time some hot-headed copper like you pulls him in and then lets him off the hook again, just puts another piece in his armour. You want him away. What's so special about your own private little war? Don't think they won't make capital out of it. How many times have you been involved with him personally? Five times in the last three years? How much have you got out of him? How many convictions? Nothing. What was it his counsel said the last time? A personal vendetta. Don't think they won't make a lot out of that. We've got a witness. A witness, a witness who won't testify. And even if he did, they'd tear him to pieces. A man who's prepared to sell his own brother-in-law. Oh, great character reference, that is. Who else was involved with the deal? Well? No one. No one. What about Slee? Slee, Slee maybe didn't even see who shot him, and if he did, what are the chances of him suddenly and conveniently losing his memory? All right, he's a brave man, but how brave is he going to be now that he's looked down the wrong end of a shotgun? I know, he'll keep his mouth shut the same as all the rest of them. And your Mr Bowers gets bigger. You're a fool. A fool. We can still hold him. Not a chance. That grubby little solicitor of his would have him out on bail quicker than you could even think about it. Then he starts to put his alibi together, and you will have let him. And why? Because you didn't wait for Darbin's statement, and you didn't even stick to rule number one. You check his known associates for last night, then you pull him in. Then when he starts to put his story together, you might, you just might, have something to check back on. Rookie on the beat would have known that. Not you, oh no, not Flash Harry. Go on, get out. One of these days, sir, that rule book might get stuck down your throat. You! Fouled it up. You know how it is, Terry. We get information, we have to act on it. Yeah, but wounded. I mean, me. A mistake. I hope so. Apologies. Yeah. You won't. No, no point. Ah, well, I'll ring for a car for you. Oh, don't bother. It's all part of the service. Uh, appearances. Right. 
How's the motor train? Oh, must have grubble. They tell me you're expanding. Well, could I do our bit? <laughs> Try. Well, you know your own way out. Prove it. No point in keeping Darwin any longer. Explain the um, situation to him, let him go. You can't let him Do as go. I say, Sergeant. Oh, and make sure he understands that Bowers doesn't know we had him in, right? Right, sir. What was it? You laughed them all the way back to the embankment? Haven't finished yet. Not quite. Kingdom. Fine. Straight away. Hospital. Sleeves regain consciousness. As soon as they're finished in there, get what you can out of him. Sir, do I uh, prod him about Darwin, sir? Why oh, shouldn't think he'll need much prodding. By the way, I've let him go, Darwin. It's a bit choice, isn't it, sir? Well, if you mean I've put him on the spot, you're quite right. I owe him something for his cooperation. I want him under 24 hour surveillance. After all, it's just possible that someone might get word to Bowers that Darwin shopped him. Just might, of course, you understand? I understand, sir. Good. Because there's a chance, just a chance, but a chance nevertheless, that Bowers will want to straighten him out. With any luck, he might even decide to do it himself. Uh, he's arrogant enough, mad enough, I've even heard it said. The Judas Goat. Huh? Darwin. You've set him up. I'm tired. Uh, good night. Mm. Morning, gentlemen. Strictly by the book. What's that? Forget it.